Hello. Um, let's start doing some physics. First off, I need to make sure the stream is going. Yes, the stream is going, and it's going good. Okay, uh, so we're going to be doing questions from Chapter 4, which are conceptual questions, more or less, from the uh, lecture. Uh, so, question 1, 7, 8, 14, 43, 47, 52, 53, 56, 61, and 67. Uh, a lot of these involve ideas about Newton's laws. A lot of these involve um, doing things like drawing free body diagrams and talking about recognizing the forces, imagining what the forces are. So this should be a pretty fun time, I think, for everybody. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the, uh, the little book. Uh, sorry, on the little side uh, instant chat thing. Let's do question one. Question one goes like this. Whiplash injuries during an automobile accident are caused by inertia of the head. If somebody's wearing a seatbelt, her body will tend to move with the car seat. Uh, so the car seat moves and the person moves with them. Okay. Um... However, her head is free to move until the neck restrains it, causing damage to the neck. Brain damage can also occur. Figure 4.1 shows sequence of heads, neck motions for a passenger in an auto incident accident. Uh, one corresponds to a head-on collision, the other a rear-end collision. Which is which? So let me start by drawing a sketch. A looks like this. So these are their necks. Uh, B looks like this one. Uh, that's kind of a a strange diagram for it but that's the story so the question one is so here's two heads one of them is in an accident well they're both in accidents is it a head-on collision or a collision from behind so the question here is um, what kind of forces can a neck push on an object I think in this case it's probably gonna be a pulling force so in this case the force is gonna be pushing like that and pulling like that which is why it's so twisted in this case it's pulling like that and probably pulling like that so in which case so in this case their acceleration is going to be forward because of the force is forward and in this one the acceleration is going to be backwards in which case do you accelerate forward is that when a car hits you from the front here's me, my car Here's another car, head-on collision. Or is it one where you get rear-ended? So here is there's a truck. Boop, boop, and then like this. So which is which? Uh, and so in this question we ask which one corresponds to which acceleration? Um, I think in this one, in the first one here, you're probably going to accelerate that way, right? Your car's gonna accelerate that way because you get bopped by a car. And in this one, you accelerate that way. You get bopped forward. Oh, uh, which one's me? I guess that's the question. This one's me and this one's me. That's my car, okay? So in this one, I'm accelerating in that direction because that's the direction the car hit me. In this one, I'm accelerating in this direction because that's the direction it hit me. So when I get rear-ended, that's the acceleration. And so this is what it looks like to your head when you get s hit in the back of your car. And then uh, that is when you get in a head-on collision. Your head does that. So now you know. Make sure there's no comments. Nobody's commented. Is anybody watching? One person is watching. Might be me. I don't know. Anyway, 
can say something if you have a question. Let's move on to question number seven. Question number seven goes like this. <clears throat> a mountain climber is hanging from a rope in the middle of a crevasse. The rope is vertical. Identify the forces on the mountain climber. So here's your mountain climber, amazing core strength, and they're hanging from a rope. Uh, what are the forces acting on them? Well, clearly weight is a thing here. So weight. Uh, what else? He's not being pushed for the left side or the right side. Um, he's not accelerating. His velocity is constant zero so the acceleration zero so there has to be another force pulling him up I guess and that's probably gonna be the tension force and I would bet he wishes it was a little bit stronger somebody may be pulling him up instead he's just dangling there all right what's the next question question eight a circus clown hangs from the, the from one end of a large string the other end is anchored to the ceiling Identify the forces on the clown. So here's our ceiling. And here's the spring. And for some reason, a circus clown is hanging from it. Alright, hold on. All right, there you go. A <laughs> circus clown is hanging from a string, reaching his hand out to grab something, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> what are the forces on him? Again, he's still, so there's no acceleration. Uh, there's the weight. And the spring force, pulling him up. <coughs> These questions are very hard. Let's see if anybody has anything to ask in the chat. Nobody has anything to ask in the live chat. I guess let's move on to question 14. Question 14 goes like this. A constant force applied to object A causes it to accelerate at 5 meters per second squared. The same force applied to object B causes an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. Applied to object C, it causes an acceleration of 8 meters per second. Okay, so A, B, C. So apply a certain amount of force. Apply a certain amount of force. All right, here, I'll draw it over here. F net, F net, F net. Each of these cause some acceleration. Uh, the first one is five meters per second. The second one, is, so that's the acceleration. The second one is three meters per second. The third one is eight meters per second. All right, which object has the largest mass? Question A, which object has the largest mass? The answer is this one, object B. How can you tell it has a larger mass than the other two? It accelerates the least amount when you push it. 
Question B. Which object has the smallest mass? Uh, the one, the smaller the mass is, the more you're going to accelerate given a given force. So this one has the smallest la mass. C has the smallest mass. Now, question C. What's the ratio of mass A to mass B? All right, so um, how do you do these questions? How does one do these questions? Uh, we know that F is equal to MA acceleration. <clears throat> so uh, what you do, step one is you solve for MA. So MA is equal to the force divided by the acceleration on A. Okay? Now, I'm going to replace the m's in this with that expression. So ma over mb is equal to force over aa divided by force over ab. Now the forces are the same in the two examples. So that and that are going to cancel out and these ratios become ab over AA, which I can then plug in. AB is three meters per second, and AA is five meters per second. Hooray, there's the ratio. So one is three-fifths the mass of the other. Let's see if anybody has any questions. No questions. Okay. I guess we'll go to page, question 43. Oh man, problem number two of this is really messed up uh, on this page. So on this page, it's got a sleeping baby. Sleeping baby. And it's all like, I'm just asleep. I got a pudgy arm. And I got one of those pudgy baby hands. That's not the messed up part. The messed up part is there's this cute picture of a sleeping baby. And then the question goes, hold on, let me finish the picture of a cute baby. All right. And the question goes, an automobile has a head on collision passenger in the car experiences a compression injury to the brain. So it's a head-on collision. Ooh, that pen's too big. There we go. All right. Head-on collision. You got these two cars. All right. All right. So um, if this car is me, I'm going to accelerate in that direction when I'm hit. <clears throat> so the question asks, which injury is most likely to be, is the injury more likely to be in the front or rear portion of the brain? How do you figure that out? You gotta draw a little brain. So here's the face of my, well, me, I guess. And inside is a brain. Yeah, that's what my brain looks like. Okay, so if I'm going to accelerate this way, one of the walls of my skull are gonna hit the brain. Which, which side does the brain feel the force? The brain's gonna get pushed in this direction. Which side of the skull is it gonna get pushed? This side of the skull right there is gonna push the brain. It's going to hit you right in the language centers of your brain, right here, right, right where all your memories are, and your sense of self, and your ability to sue. No, wait, that's not right. Anyway, 
Long story short, that's kind of a disturbing question. This is a biophysics textbook, so they're like, hey, let's always connect this back to biology. But I don't know. I find that question kind of disturbing. Okay. So let's move to the next question. Let's see what it is. Uh, 43. <clears throat> 43 goes like this. Problem 43 through 49 show a free body diagram. Draw the diagram. That's step one. So the diagram looks like this. There you go. Uh, they like to draw the x-axis and y-axis, and I agree that that's a pretty fun idea. And then the forces. There's a force pointing this way, and a force pointing this way, and a force pointing this way, and a force pointing this way. F kinetic. Come. <clears throat> okay. Indicate the direction of acceleration. Oh yeah, and then down here it writes F net. Don't draw the net force. See this? See this? Don't draw this on the diagram. Whatever you do, don't draw the net force on the diagram. You can draw it wherever you want. Don't draw it as part of the diagram. Okay, so the question asks, which direction is the acceleration going to be? It's going to be in that direction. Okay. <clears throat> okay, done. Um, so then the next question is, write a f short, short description of a real object for this, for which this is the correct free body diagram. Okay, so what object are we talking about? Um, you'll note that every time in this book we write down a force, we're writing down a letter. And each of these letters correspond to one of the forces we covered in class. What does W stand for? Weight. So it's obviously an object. Y is obviously the vertical axis in this case because the weight of an object always pulls down. Uh, what's this guy? N. That stands for normal force. Normal, oh, sorry. <clears throat> a normal force is the force that uh, an object um, encounters when it tries to push through a surface. So there's obviously something solid here that's pushing back. Normal force. This T usually stands for tension. So tension always points in the direction that the rope is hanging. So there's evidently some kind of rope here or cord or wire. And then F usually stands for friction and the K stands for kinetic. So there has to be kinetic friction pushing this way. All right, so can you come up with an example of a system where there's a rope pulling to the right, and then there's kinetic friction pulling to the left, and then there's a normal force pushing up and weight pushing down. Try to figure out one right now. Think it through. I'll give you a couple seconds. Have you written one down? Try writing it down. Write down your example. Hey, one person watching. Write down the example. Think about a, what's going to cause a kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is caused when two surfaces slide across each other. And it's in the direction to stop the sliding. Have you got the answer? OK. <clears throat> so, um, so, Let's see, a common example. How about if, hmm, no, that one's not stupid enough. 
All right, I'm going to give an answer, and you tell me if it's right or wrong. How about, how's this for an answer? You have a, um, what is it called? A treadmill. And the treadmill's turning. Okay. And then you have, uh, you know, the front of your treadmill, and you tie a rope to that. And then you attach a, um, an inconsiderate cat. The thing about this cat is for some reason it likes how it feels when the treadmill runs under it. So the cat lies down and starts to purr as the treadmill passes under it. How about that? So the rope holds the cat in place and the treadmill turns under it. Do you think that's the right answer? I'll give you a couple seconds to think it through. Do you have it, Rhett? Okay. Write the answer down as yes or no. Three, two, one. All right, now tell me. No, you got it wrong. This is a bad answer. No. No. What's wrong with my answer? Is the cat accelerating in this example? No. Do I need there to be an acceleration? Well, when we set up the problem, we argued that there was, that the thing is moving to the right because it's gonna feel a net force because the tension is much bigger than the kinetic friction. So what is it? Um, so it's like, uh, I don't know, imagine that you have a crate and you're working in the crate factory, pulling crates around. So this is you you're unhappy with your life choices and you're pulling a crate. Pulling a crate forward. You're pulling the box forward and you pull it really hard so it accelerates forward. Friction tries to slow it down. How's that for a story? That works. <coughs> Not too original, but whatever. You work in a crate factory, you don't really have much cause to complain. 47. All right, here's what the diagram looks like. Here's X, here's Y. <clears throat> Here are my forces as they're labeled. N force points that way, W force points that way, K force points that way, F net points that way. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the acceleration is going to be in that direction, same direction as the net force. Next question, try to come up with an example. Okay, I didn't like the first one where I tried to make you come up with an example. So I'm going to draw three examples. So uh, how, how do we parse this before we go on? Uh, again, the letters in the names tell you what kind of forces they are. That's weight. So it must point straight, straight down. That points downwards. Uh, this is the normal force. There's our object. The normal force is always perpendicular to uh, a solid surface. So the normal force points in that direction and weight must be pointing in that direction. So it's an object on a slope. And then friction, kinetic friction, points that way. Uh, so that means that the object is uh, feeling friction. So which of these three examples do you think it is? It's a penguin. Penguin slides down the slope. Or the wily penguin slides up the slope. Or 
the lazy penguin just stands still on the slope. Okay. This corresponds to one of these three or more. Make up your mind. Which is it going to be? Is it going to be this one? Or is it going to be this one? Or is it this going to be this one? Place your bets now. Hopefully you're watching this with somebody and you can actually make a bet. But if you can't, well, that's fine. Which of these penguins does this force diagram correspond to? Ready? Okay. So let's compare these to our force diagrams. The normal force pushes them up in all three cases, fine. Gravity pushes them down, so the force of the weight pulls them down, that's fine. What's the distinction here? Well, okay, can it be this one? What's the acceleration? The acceleration has to be down the slope. Is this one accelerating? No, it's sitting still. So it can't be that penguin. Not this pengi. No. No. Why isn't our thing working? No. Okay. That leaves this, these other two. Which is it going to be? The thing needs to accelerate. Which of these two is accelerating downwards? You know from experience that this one's velocity is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this one's accelerating downwards. This one, its velocity is going to get smaller and smaller. And so it's also accelerating downward direction. So both of the, these top two have a downward acceleration. So that's not it. What else can we use to discern the difference between the two? Kinetic friction. Both are sliding. That means kinetic friction. Which direction are they going to feel a friction? This one's going to feel a friction in that, door, that direction. The kinetic friction always serves to slow down the surfaces. Kinetic friction doesn't like when two surfaces rub against each other. So kinetic friction on the penguin points that way. Kinetic friction in this case points opposite. Okay. So this one is our brave penguin. Let's see if anybody has any questions. No questions. Okay. 52. <clears throat> An elevator suspended by a single cable. Oh, hold on. Uh, problems 52 and 63 describe a situation. For each, draw a motion diagram, a force identification diagram, and a free body diagram. So I guess the force identification diagrams probably look like this. And motion diagrams, we've talked about those before. They're the position and velocities. And then free body diagrams look like these. Okay. Ooh. All right, so 50, 52, an elevator suspended by a single cable. Has just left the 10th floor and is speeding up as it descends towards the ground floor. Okay, so. This is the 10th floor. It's going to be speeding up. So it goes downwards at first, and then it speeds up. OK. Which direction is it accelerating? It's accelerating in that direction, downwards. OK. Now let's identify the forces. Um, okay, so this is vertical motion, so there's probably going to be weight to it. Uh, 
Weight is the only non-contact force that we're interested in, but in talking about in this course, so is there any other object touching my elevator box? Any other object? This person is part of the elevator box. So any other object touching? Yes, this, this rope is touching the elevator box. Ropes pull in the direction that they lie. So it's going to be tension. So the free body diagram looks like this. Weight. Tension. Last question before we go, which of these is going to be longer? Is the tension force going to be bigger or is the weight going to be bigger? Well, to answer that, which, which of these, what's the direction of the net force? The net force is in the direction of the acceleration. So that means which of these two are bigger? The weight vector has to be bigger. That's a little excessive, but nobody's nobody uh, nobody's worried about that. Let's see if there's any other questions. No questions. Two people are watching. Hello, second person. Welcome to the stream. Question fifty-three. A rocket is being launched straight up. Air resistance is not negligible. Got to draw a rocket. Uh, a little place for the person to look out. Okay. And rockets need rocket fins. And we got to draw the fire coming out the back. Hold on, fire's red. Okay, so uh, let's draw, start by drawing the, the motion diagram. The rocket's being launched straight up, so that probably means it's going to accelerate upwards. And as time passes, its velocity increases, its velocity gets bigger and bigger, and it speeds up. So now its velocity is big. Before, its velocity was smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller okay which direction is it accelerating it must be accelerating upwards which direction does it feel a net force net force always points in the direction of the acceleration so the net force has to be in that direction let's look at the system and think about which forces are acting on it uh, gravity so there's weight pulling it down. What other forces on it? Uh, there has to be a thrust. I forget how they called thrust in the book. Pointing up. Is that the only force? Uh, it says air resistance is non-negligible. So there's probably an air resistance. Pushing that direction. So let's draw the free body diagram. Weight pushes down. Wait, hold on. Weight pushes down. And the drag force pushes down. And the thrust force pushes up. OK. Any questions? Do you see how that gets done? <clears throat> you start by drawing a little picture, thinking about things, and you draw a motion diagram. And from the motion diagram, you're first illustrating where the object is, but then you want to illustrate what the velocities are. Because when you know what the velocities are, you can get a sense of what the acceleration is. And when you know the acceleration, you can figure out what the net force is going to be. Well, which direction? Why is that important? Because if you know the direction of the net force, you can figure out which of these vectors is going to be bigger. And then you take all these vectors and you put them on your free body diagram. Next question is question 56. Let's 
check the live stream, see if anybody has any questions. Oh, somebody left. They were watching and they left. Okay, so this question goes, a ski is going down a 20 degree slope. A horizontal headwind is blowing in the skier's face. Friction is small, but not zero. Okay, so always start by drawing a picture. There you go, 20 degrees. Drawing a picture is sometimes the smartest thing you can do. It might seem like a waste of time, but you're not really wasting time. You're uh, thinking. And also it's fun to draw pictures. And uh, while you're drawing pictures, your brain is working. So it's never a waste of time, although mm, things can get excessive. Try not to go overboard on the picture. Okay, so let's talk about the motion diagram. How do you do a motion diagram? Let's start by drawing the slope. Motion, these are kind of one dimensional problems. So you start up on the top of the ski hill and then you go down. And I don't know about you, I'm gonna assume that the acceleration is zero for the, for the most part of the trip. Cause I don't want the skier to go, to keep accelerating without end. I'll accelerate at the start and then sit at constant velocity. Why? Because I'm writing the answer to this question and that seems fun to me. Okay. <clears throat> Let's illustrate the forces. Uh, there's the weight, as always. What other forces are described? Uh, they say that there's, a, there's, there's a, a, a wind pushing this way. Horizontal. So the wind is going to push in this direction. And wind is a drag force. That's what it's called. Okay. Now, are there any other forces acting on the object? To answer that question, we have to ask ourselves if there are... Um, to answer that question, we have to ask ourselves, are there any other things touching the object? Like I said before, contact forces. It's all about the forces that come from things that you're in contact with. Are there any other contact forces? Uh, well, he's touching the ground, so there's going to be a normal force. I don't know how that big that's going to be, but it's going to be perpendicular to the thing. And are there any other forces? It says friction is not is small, but not zero. Which direction is the kinetic friction going to be in? Kinetic friction is going to point, point uphill. Wait, that's not how they draw it. They draw it like this. Okay. So the kinetic friction is trying to slow him down. The wind is pushing him back up the hill. The normal force is pushing him in that direction. Gravity is pushing him down. What does the free body diagram look like this? To help you on the free body diagram, and uh, the reason we, we draw... Sometimes it's pretty helpful to, to draw tilted axes like this because in tilting the axes, we reduce a two dimensional problem down to a one dimensional problem. So even though it's kind of an intermediate, weird, tricky step, it makes analyzing everything a lot easier. <coughs> I'm sorry. I just bonked the, uh, the thing. All right. So let's draw our forces. Normal force is perpendicular to the curve, so it's 90 degrees. The weight is straight down. The kinetic friction points up the slope, and the drag points this way. And that's it. Oh, I am sleepy. Oh, dude. I don't know why I'm so sleepy. I'm going to drink some water. Hold on. Oh, 
Uh, okay. Doing a live show means that you got to keep on uh, working even if you're whining. Question 61. A gymnast has just landed on a trampoline. She's still moving downwards as the trampoline stretches. All right, so... Um, so here's a gymnast. Gymnasts always have forced smiles on. Have you noticed that? Um, and gymnasts always hold their hands above their heads. So there you go. It says it's a girl gymnast, so I guess I have to draw a girl gymnast. Do guys wear the leotards too? Seems like a type of thing a person would wear doing gymnastics. And they're bouncing on a trampoline. So here's the edges of the trampoline. And trampolines deform under you. Like that. Uh, also, gymnasts hold their hands like this for some reason. That's yeah, pretty good. Do gymnasts have hair? I forget. Okay, done. Um... Uh, so, um, let me label the, for, the, the, uh, the, uh, did we draw the, yeah, we drew the motion diagram. So what does the motion of the, uh, of the gymnast look like? Where should we keep track of her? Let's keep track of her head. So I'm going to keep track of right there. So first it's head height. Uh, oh, I should probably track her feet. I'm going to track not her hair, that's foolish. I don't know what someone was thinking when they suggested that we track her hair. Instead, I'm going to track her feet. So, uh, if this line here represents the neutral height of the trampoline, first the gymnast is here, and she's traveling fast, right? So then she goes down here. Why am I drawing stars? First she's here, and she's traveling with a big velocity. But then she slows down. You know what, I'm gonna draw the velocity second. First she's here, and then she slows down to a stop, okay? What's her velocity doing? Her velocity, I'm gonna need a smaller pen. Her velocity is big at first, but then it gets smaller and smaller, okay? So which direction is she accelerating while she's on the tramp? The acceleration vector is going to be upwards because her velocity in the downwards direction gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so what are the forces on her? Let's think about this. Um, well, there's gonna be weight. That always points straight down. What are the forces on it? Well, what's she touching? That's always the question. What's she in contact with? She's in contact with the trampoline, and the trampoline is pushing upwards. Um, what do you call that force? You can call it the uh, spring force, because technically the trampoline is like a spring, or you can call it the normal force. I'm going to call it the normal force, because it's perpendicular to the trampoline. So the free body diagram looks like this. Weight. Weight. weight and then the normal force has to be bigger because the net force has to point upwards does that make sense all right um, one question you might ask is hey how do you know whether this one's gonna be bigger than that one how do you know that this is gonna be the true um, that's good good question Morty uh, the idea here is that the acceleration points up, and so the net force points up. You know that there are two forces acting on the object, so this one must be bigger. Okay. Uh, time for the last question. Question 67. That pen's too big. There you go. 67 goes like this. The frog hopper, a champion leaper of the insect world, can jump straight up at four meters per second. The jump itself lasts a mere 
one millisecond before the insect is clear of the ground. Draw a free body diagram of the mighty leaper while the jump is taking place. Okay. Um, I don't know what a frog hopper looks like. So I'm going to just draw a frog. Yeah, this frog's pretty good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so. <clears throat> to jump, the frog has to accelerate upwards, right? Why does it have to accelerate upwards? Well, its initial velocity before it starts jumping is zero. And then its final velocity is plus four meters per second. So the acceleration has to be in the positive direction. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, what forces are on the, on the frog? There's the weight. What other forces? What else is the frog in touch with? Well, uh, there's, the, there's the normal force. Wait, it's not called that in this book. It's called little n. Um, are there any other forces? There's the mythical frog force, but I mentioned before that that's a myth. So there's only the normal force. Uh, so I guess to jump high, the normal force has to be bigger than the weight. So this has to be bigger than that, which is fun. Makes sense. While the jumping was taking place, is the force the ground exerts on the frog hopper greater than, less than, or equal to the insect's weight? The normal force has to be bigger than the weight because you're accelerating upwards. All right. Well, that's it for today's questions. Let's see if anybody has any questions on the thingy. <coughs> Nobody. Nobody has any questions. All right. Well, uh, that's it for today. I hope you had fun. See you later. Stop streaming.